aid programs are on the decline in urban city schools, Hoffman 2013. Since 2010, 14 schools have dropped the Debate Kansas City program, resulting in a 90% funding cut for the UMKC ur supported Urban Debate League. Debate in city schools across America is pretty much dead. The second lack of federal funding is a problem, and it is causing participation by urban debate teams to falter. This is Paul Nye in 2006. The problem is that federal and private funds dried up this year for the Seattle Debate Foundation. It has 15,000 of just the 50,000 it needs to get through the fall. Finally, access to debate is unequal. This is Tom Evan in 2012. Debate stands out as a high school activity that we know can be tremendously intellectually rewarding, but to truly gain those benefits, students need access to rigorous camps, quality coaching, and the chance to attend competitive tournaments. So as it stands, the intellectual rewards of debate are, for the most part, reserved only for those who can afford its high cost of admission. Because we believe every student in the United States should have access to the academic and intellectual rewards of debate, we offer the following plan. The Department of Education will mandate starting and or maintaining a comprehensive forensics program that includes interscholastic debate for students at all public secondary schools in the United States, funding guaranteed in the amount of $520 million from the Department of Education discretionary budget. <coughs> Observation two is solvency. First district funding is key to successful high school debate programs. This is Leslie, 1988. Uh, debate coaches are professional educators and rightly insist on being paid for their time and expertise. Some of this money is spent on travel, both local and national. Then there are assistant coaches providing a sizable edge in training and support over the program that has only one coach. It also pays for a ready supply of basic debate materials. A school's debate budget, therefore, converts into competitive advantages at a rather high level of efficiency. Second, statistical research proves that long-term stable funding is necessary to not just participation but competitive success. This is Bill Neeson and Jason Kramer, 2001. This study proved that the economic standing of a high school is directly related to the success of that high school at debate tournaments. Students from economically underprivileged high schools were not as su successful as students from richer high schools. These findings point to the need for debate outreach at econo economically underserved schools. Advantage one is critical thinking. First secondary school students in the U.S. currently lack the necessary training and education in critical thinking. This is Chris Christopher Cope, 2011. Everything is being done with the guidance of a teacher going through the steps of a procedure, and this is where the problem is. The bottom line is teachers need to encourage critical individual thinking among their students. This critical thinking problem is pervasive among secondary school students in both reading and writing. This is Shmoli Yankowitz, 2013. Only 6% of 12th graders can make informed critical judgments about written text, and only 15% of 12th graders demonstrate the proficiency to write well-organized essays that consisted of clear arguments. The result of this is citizens who lack knowledge and are easily taken in by simplistic thinking and irrational arguments. This is Lawrence Davidson, 2013. Rick Schenkman in 2008 demonstrated that most Americans were ignorant about major international events, knew little about their own government who runs and who runs it, uh, were nonetheless willing to accept government positions and policies even though a moderate amount of critical thought suggested they were bad for the country, and were really readily swayed by stereotyping, simplistic solutions, irrational fears, and public relations babble. Luckily, research shows that debate cultivates critical thinking. This is Sezo Ayagi, uh, 2010. Because debate requires logical persuasion to participants, debate has been regarded as useful for cultivating logical thinking or debating skills and practice in educational contexts as debate learning. This characteristic of debate is also useful for cultivating critical thinking. A foundation in argumentation and exploration of multiple perspectives on issues produces not only more educated and engaged citizens, but also increases epistemic and moral development of our youth and hence our future leaders. This is Shmoli Yankowitz, 2013. Critical thinking and argument skills, the abilities to both generate and critique arguments, are crucial elements in decision making. When applied to academic settings, argumentation may promote the long-term understanding and retention of course content. In all careers, academic classes, and relationships, Argument skills can be used to enhance learning when we treat reasoning as a process of argumentation. It is imperative that high school students of diverse personal, moral, and intellectual commitments become prepared to confront multiple perspectives on unclear and controversial issues when they move on to college and their careers. This is not only important for assuring students are equipped to compete in the marketplace of ideas, but also to maximize their own cognitive development more broadly. School-based nurturance of that development will lead to students' autonomous critical thinking and their formation as responsible citizens. We must invest in the education of our youth. They are our future. In addition, individuals who think critically live, live reason reasonably and empathetically. They avoid sim simplistic thinking and consider the rights and needs of others. This is Linda Elder, 2007. Critical thinking is self-guided, self-disciplined thinking which attempts to reason at the highest level of quality in a fair-minded way. People who think critically are keenly aware of the inherently flawed nature of human thinking when left unchecked. They recognize the complexities in developing as thinkers and commit themselves to lifelong practice towards self-improvement. 
This consideration and empathy is necessary to avoid dehumanizing others. Jerome Vest et al. 2012. An adequate understanding of humanist equality that is de uh, denied to others when they are dehumanized is necessary in order to get a full grasp of what it means to dehumanize others. Dehumanization causes violence, cruelty, and genocide. This is Tom Thomas Homer Dixon, 2012. Participants in violent conflict often dehumanize their opponents. Indeed, some form of dehumanization is arguably a defining feature of the most brutal acts of human violence, such as saturation bombardment of civilian populations, terrorist attacks on urban centers, intense battlefield combat, and genocide. Dehumanization renders nothing sacred, including human life. The result is a society of total, total domination lacking in freedom and choice. Uh, dehumanization destroys the value to life and outweighs all calculable impacts. This is Dr. David Baru, 1997. Dehumanization is nuclear war, environmental apocalypse, and international genocide. When people become things, they become dispensable. When people are dispensable, any and every atrocity can be justified. Thank you. Um, can I have a copy of your plan check, please? <laughs> Plan test, not the case. <laughs> okay, so um, how did you get how much money the Department of Education is going to allocate through all these schools? So the Department of Education is giving $520 million from their discretionary budget, and how we got to that is um, we took a number of public schools across um, uh, the United States and multiplied that by, by the amount of money it takes to run a successful uh, debate program. Okay, so now debate is more like an extracurricular activity. How are you going to, how is this going to be mandatory for all students to do this? It's going, debate, uh, by fostering these debate programs, it's going to be an extracurricular activity that students can be involved with, but by creating more access um, to, these, to, the, to this program that results in these uh, this critical thinking skills, we're going to allow for more people to get involved with it. So just having that access is going to create more involvement. Okay, yeah, I see that. So then, but how is the Department of Education from the federal government, how is it going to ensure that these students will want to do this just with $520 million that you're going to give? Well, in my cards, I showed how access to debate is unequal right now. And so just by giving um, all of these schools the funding they need to incorporate and uh, implement these programs, it's going to allow for more student participation in such programs. Okay, so um, down on your uh, impact of your first advantage, my advantage or my impact? The impact, the dehumanization. Okay. So what you're saying is that people who aren't going to be doing debate now, they're going to go into dehumanization, like students who already don't I'm do talking debate. about how the lack of critical thinking skills yeah. in society right now leads to dehumanization, that a lack of critical thinking skills is the root cause, the underlying problem of dehumanization. Okay. So then I guess more for, um, now, is your funding through normal means? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So then, I guess just um, my main question is, this is, I don't see how the Department of Education, like you're just, okay, you took money from it, but how is this going to force like teaching the debate in these schools? Well, the problem is that these debate programs aren't being funded. They're, I talked about how in my first um, observation, my inherency card, about how, um, uh, the Seattle Debate League only has 15,000 of the 50,000 it needs to get through the fall. So mm -hmm. by providing this, these, uh, this funding to these schools, we're allowing for more participation. We're allowing for these teams to get, the, get to the advantage of critical thinking. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, so roadmap. I will be doing three off cases. And then on case to solvency, and then down to the dehumanization impact. And I'll be sure to sign post for that. First we get um, T, education is the process of teaching. A, interpretation. The affirmative team must alter the way something is taught. Miriam Online Dictionary 2013. Education, the action or process of teaching someone, especially in a school, college, or university. B, the violation. The affirmative team does not alter the action or process of teaching. And C, standards. 
One is a bright line. The, the negative interpretation clearly distinguishes between topical and non-topical agents. And two, ground. Due to the immense legislative power of Congress, the negative interpretation offers significant ground for affirmative plans. And three, limits. The negative interpretation provides fair limits to the resolution that prevent plans from spinning off into obs obscurity. And three, predictability. The negative definition comes from a Merriam-Webster uh, definition. The affirmative must be prepared to face such predictable definitions. And five, dictionary definitions are best. Choose the dictionary definition because its authors seek to define the words while writing their books. And D, this is a voter's fairness. Since the negative team has a larger research burden, it is imperative that you allow us to establish reasonable limits to preserve the fairness of the debate and to education. Unpredictable affirmatives don't allow us to have an educational conversation. And three, jurisdiction. As judges of the resolution, it's outside of your jurisdiction to vote for a plan that is not topical. Um, simply that her plan is not altering the way something is taught right now. She's just taking money strictly from the discretionary budget of the DOE and then allocating it. Um, next off case um, is a counter plan. The 50 states and all relevant U.S. territories should um, mandate starting and or maintaining comprehensive uh, forensics program in that includes interscholastic debate for students at all public secondary schools in the United States. Solvency. States are able to run education policy without the federal government. CATO Institute 2009. A federal, a federal rule has suppressed innovation and diversity in state education systems. Researchers have found the serious shortcomings with many federal education programs. Experience has shown that the federal funding and top-down intervention are not ways to create a high-quality K-12 education system. So the plan and the counter plan are mutually exclusive. The federal government and 50 states do not, uh, uh, would not do the same policy, meaning that the permutation will fail. And this, um, that's why I also bring forth um, uh, next off case is the um, disadvantage, federalism disadvantage. The United States Constitution does not grant the power to regulate education to the federal government, Dennis 2011, Bucknell University. The Tenth Amendment to the United States Constitution states the powers do not the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution nor prohibited prohibited by, by it to the states are reserved are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. Since education is not mentioned in the Constitution, it is one of those powers reserved to the states. And the Obama administration is stepping beyond its constitutional authority and expanding federal power via education policy. Um, Boychuk, 2001. <clears throat> education is, necess is, a, is necessarily a state and local concern. Even if the subjects of education are the same everywhere, the needs and the, char uh, the character of any given community are often quite different from others. The result is an accumulation of power in Washington, D.C. and the expense of states and local authority and responsibility. To many Americans and their elected leaders, labor, labor under the belief that there's no problem the federal government cannot solve. In reality, the problem of public education only worsens worsens the more federal bureaucracies um, inference, and increased federalism advances hegemony, Revlin 92. If the United States is to be an effective world leader, it cannot afford overlapping responsibilities between the federal government and the states. Effective domestic policy is essential to U.S. leadership in world affairs, and hegemony prevents multiple scenarios in nuclear war, Hagen 2007. Where the United States were the United States to diminish its influence, other nations would settle disputes through wars. Most of these powers uh, possess nuclear weapons. War would erupt between China and Taiwan, Russia and Georgia conflict, uh, Georgia conflict between India and Pakistan remains possible, as does conflict between Iran and Israel, other Middle Eastern states. These could draw into other powers. So with proposing the counter plan of the 50 states to do this, this avoids this federalism disadvantage, which would lead um, to nuclear wars. And now on to case. So first, um, going under the solvency, this is the solvency press that she simply stated that students just, um, we need more money to help fund um, debate programs in schools. But this is, but since the DOE is just allocating this money to them, it is not specifically saying we need X amount of teachers for a debate. We need um, this types of tools to help teach debate. So this is not really altering the way something is being taught is why I brought in topicality. And then down to um, the impact of dehumanization. You can always rehumanize people. Um, an example in the Holocaust is that people who the survivors are out of it were able to be rehumanized, were able to come out of that. So this um, impact does not weigh in this case. 
and um, please prefer my impact of um, <coughs> nuclear war from the federalism disadvantage. And it is more probable and more likely and more realistically going to happen, not dehumanization from lack of critical thinking, which um, is not even true. And I'm open for process. Okay, uh, on topicality, what was your interpretation of it? Um, you must alter the way something is taught. Okay. Also, um, can you give me, this is off case to your account plan, can you give me an example of when all states have come together to pass one unified law? Absolutely. For example, the highways, um, having a speed limit, or um, alcohol age, being able to legally drink. So, you're using uh, the passage of speed limit laws synony synonymously with education reform? No, you only you asked me for an example of um, what in unison all 50 states have agreed upon. I was just giving you an example of how realistic and probable and is okay. it actually happening. Yeah, you answer my question. Um, how, uh, how are the states going to be able to fund this if you're giving um, the education reform delegation back to states? Right, okay. So um, what it would do is, um, as you've seen in a lot of public schools have become charter, so therefore they're allowed to use their own money within their local communities. So, um, for example, that they're allocating this money without having to rely on the federal government, oh, here's only X amount of dollars, when they're able to see the funds and be able to properly allocate it in exactly what specific programs need the help rather than just throwing a huge dollar amount to the states. Okay, well, you didn't exactly answer my question. Where's the money coming from, from the states? I mean, yeah, I said local, local communities. States, all states, um, public schools have their own budgets. In it, that budget, wouldn't they have to cut okay, so, from another program then okay. to, to fund these big programs every, that don't exist? In every, the quote? every state um, uses 87% of their own money to fund, to fund each one of their um, public schools. So it's only relying on what? I don't know, 10% of the federal government, anyways. <laughs> um, on your uh, your other off case advantage, um, how do you personally define um, hegemony? I mean that was an impact, but um, hegemony means it's it's sort of kind of like a U.S. Um, precedence. It's kind of setting the example of look at this is what we're doing and this is how to be an effective country, especially through education. So if, if that goes down, then other countries are gonna look to the United States and say, oh, look how much they're deteriorating or look how, it's, um, look how much they're failing. So we just kind of have to set this um, global precedence, this example of how well to run a country and how effective that we have been in the past. And I think if we do this through federal government, it's gonna decrease our, um, this hegemony. Okay, sounds ethnocentric, but okay, I'm done with process. Um, okay, so for roadmap, um, same order. I mean, that's fine, top county, count in. Okay, everyone ready? So first on topicality, uh, on education, the way instruction is given, that, that's the affirmative definition. Um, the interpretation is that the affirmative team must change uh, the way instruction is given. However, I'm gonna offer a counter interpretation of education from Google search engine. The process of receiving or giving systematic instruction, especially at a school or university. It's my counter interpretation of the word education. Um, I meet this definition of edu education because adding in debate changes the process of giving instruction and um, creating more learning in the student um, environment. For counter standards, education. By broadening th this definition of education, a more thorough and in-depth understanding of the issues required, which is good for learning. Her definition of education is way too over-limiting on my side. We're not gonna have this, this breadth and depth of education in this debate round if we have this over-limiting definition that the negative side um, interprets. So we're decreasing education in that aspect. On predictability, uh, the affirmative definition comes from a Google search and we would be the first definition in the search results when you type it into Google. And Google is, is a widely used tool and is available to the negative side. So on predictability, she should have been more aware and, and known that I would have used this definition. So her uh, standard on predictability is um, turned on that case. Um, on reasonability, the definition used is not only fair, but reasonable. She talked about how it's not reasonable for to use any other definition, but as I just told you, my definition comes from a Google search engine. It's more predictable in that sense. Um, the negative definition is way too overwhelming, as I've said, and is un 
unreasonable to debate around. Um, she also talked about how dictionary definitions are best. I've given you countless uh, examples of how when you type into Google, my definition is the first one that comes up. So you should um, uh, vote for my interpretation on that. And this is a non-voter issue. She said that you should vote for her based on topicality. It's a non-voter issue because I just gave you a counter definition. I just told you why how all her standards on the on, on ground and limits, predictability, and how dictionaries are best do not make sense because I offered you with that uh, counter definition. Now on to the 50 states counter plan. I offer a permutation to do both. So there's no reason that the federal government can't act in unison with the 50 states. It ensures integration on all levels. Um, federal action is key. The Department of, Department of Education ensures equality and access to education, Abdullah 2010. Although federal funding makes up a comparatively small portion of the total funding for public education, many of our schools he rely heavily on, these, uh, on this money to serve their most at-risk students. Uh, third, solvency, solvency deficit. The counter plan doesn't guarantee solvency for critical thinking and dehumanization because of funding issues at the state level through 2014. Any week now, the Kansas Supreme Court will rule in a lawsuit filed by parents and school districts alleging that school spending cuts um, violate the state's constitution. In New York last week, an education advocacy group filed suit claiming the state is nearly $4 billion short of fulfilling its school spending obligation. And in Texas, Lawyers earlier, short, earlier this month wrapped up closing arguments in a simu similar lawsuit. Across the country, litigation is, is pending against 11 states over inadequate or inequitable school funding. Basically, I just gave you examples over the states how they don't have this money to fund these debate programs. And so that's why um, the federal government is the key actor in this regard. The states are going to go bankrupt. Um, as an analytic argument, California is one of is um, the eighth biggest economy across the world, and um, sure they might be able to fund it. But what about the smaller states? They're not going to be able to fund it. We're going to see this decrease in econ um, the economy because the states are going to go bankrupt trying to fulfill this this plan and trying to create these debate programs. So her counter plan of, of going through the states is, doesn't have any solvency in that regard. Um, also. Um, uh, there are no examples of all 50 states acting in a uniform way on any issue, and none of their solvency assumes 50 states agreeing to uh, build one singular pilot plant amongst the 50. She gave me an example of um, speed limit laws, uh, but they vary across states. I mean, um, they're not all the same, so we're not going to have that same standard of debate programs that we see if, when passing my plan through the 50 states. So she doesn't have solvency in that regard either. Also, on a time frame issue, getting the 50 states to agree on the, the pilot plan and approved building uh, could take years. Too much bureaucracy would lead to inaction. Um, next, on to uh, her solvency specification uh, argument. Um, this is not a procedural argument, it is a solvency press. Our, my plan provides a specific actor mandating and funding and enforcement. Um, role playing as policy actors is a better education and ground than real world congressional focus. Stimulation of different roles through fiat encourages learning and empowerment. Ends in Boer 1999. Role playing will help to eliminate the dynamic of effective consensus processes. Role playing allows players to let go of actual or assumed constraints and to develop ideas for creating new conditions and possibilities. So she talks about how it's uh, not constitutional and the federal government can't mandate this uh, education reform. I'm not mandating, mandating anything, so it is constitutional because I'm giving money to the states. I'm giving money to develop these debate programs. So it is constitutional. And, and, and besides that, we're role playing. In this room right now, we are Congress. We are the policymakers, which allows for a more, more creative and educational plan text, which is why you should prefer um, my plan of having the federal government be the actor. Now, on case. Um, she talks about my impact about rehumanizing. Okay, why did we have the Holocaust then? If we were, if we can so uh, so called uh, rehumanize people, we wouldn't have had the Holocaust. The whole point of why we have these genocides, all these wars, is because we have the underlying problem problem of dehumanization. And I solve for that. Once I solve for critical thinking skills, which I do through this fostering and maintaining of these debate programs, I solve for dehumanization, which means I solve for all her impacts of war and whatnot because. I saw for the underlying, underlying root problem of dehumanization. Thank you. I'll be going T, counter disadvantage, and then directly down on case with solvency and impact, and then I'll do an end review as to when I'm winning this debate. Okay. Starting with T? Yes. T, counter plan, decide in case down the flow. You should have signed those. Okay. 
Is everyone ready? Okay, so to first begin on T, um, there's no offense, so I'm kicking it. And then now down on to the counterplay. So first she says that per we can do both, no reason that they can act in unison. I said in my first speech under the counterplan that the plan and counterplan are mutually exclusive and the 50 states would not do the same policy. That means her perm would fail. I said this beginning, the first right underneath my counterplan. So she does, she cannot perm at all and her perm does not stand, um, stand in this because I have said how the federal uh, government is bad and cannot work in unison with this. And then down to her second point, that federal action is key, that DOE ensures um, equality and all access to ed education. Again, I said how the federalism is not good with this, that the DOE is only giving a dollar amount. How does this, how is this access to all equal education? She, um, it does not, uh, that's why the states are able to do this better. And under her solvency deficit, that the counter plan doesn't guarantee for critical thinking and dehumanization because it's at the state level, well that's exactly what my counter plan is doing, is that I gain access to all of her advantages and all of her impacts, and the fact that the states are being able to do it their own way and know exactly how much money is to go to every single one of the debate programs, I would say that it's actually a turn and we actually solve for critical thinking and dehumanization a lot better. And. Um, under her, when she told me that um, I only give uh, that there's been no example of all 50 states doing one unison law, I said that um, alcohol age and speed limits. So she did not. She dropped my um, alcohol um, age what, or during cross examination and um, the fact that all states have agreed upon to have a speed limit law, not necessarily the difference of speed limit laws. So that was um, my example and time frame. Um, it's actually it's happening a lot quicker that the um, the 50 states are able to do this better because they know their own schools within their own states. So without having to rely and wait on the federal government to give them this money, they can do it right then and now. So that's why it is a time frame more probable that the plan still stands. We are able to solve for all the advantages and impacts in the case um, a lot quicker and um, it is more probable that the 50 states um, all do this. And now I want to go down to um, my disadvantage. First I want to say that she had dropped my federalism disadvantage, that I still gain access to um, the United States Constitution does not grant the power, uh, the power to regulate education. The federal government, you can extend and flow all those cards throughout um, your flow sheet. And also that um, this is uh, pretty uh, critical that the Obama administration is stepping beyond its constitutional authority and expanding um, federal power and education. And also I want to say that the greatest impact to this disadvantage is that um, hegemony prevents this multiple scenarios for nuclear war. So I still have this greatest impact that is more probable right now that nuclear war is going to happen. So, um, and which exactly goes um, back down um, onto her case. So she gave, um, when I was talking about her solvency, that I said this is a solvency press. And she had read up here that this was not a solvency press. So I think um, we kind of have, uh, she did not, um, address what I was saying about how um, I made the analytical argument that how is the DOE exactly going to solve for a proper implementation of um, debate education with all the schools and role playing. Yes, um, I'm going to turn this and agree. Role playing is good. And uh, that's not exactly what I, uh, that's not what I was going for. I was going for that. There was no uh, more structure as to where this money is going to with all these public schools. So I never um, was going against that. We shouldn't all be Congress here or we shouldn't all um, start um, thinking about how we're going to better fund these programs. Um, and then down onto her, um, onto the greatest impact of dehumanization about rehumanizing um, people that we wouldn't have that in the beginning. But what I was saying is that you are able to rehumanize. So sure, she wants to start like from a um, take a steps, uh, take a few, few steps back from this. But dehumanization is inevitable. It's um, going to happen. So that's why I was saying you are able to rehumanize, rehumanize if it's going to happen. So. Um, just an interview as to why I'm winning in this round, is that um, I've proven to you that it's more realistic and more probable that the 50 states can do this plan, that we can have um, the advantage of critical thinking among all students because it's more probable, it's more reasonable for all, um, for the 50 states to know which money, how much money they're going um, to have within their states and give it to each one of their schools. And also, um, you're not gonna buy her case because she dropped my federalism disadvantage. And that I think is one of the most um, most important um, debates uh, cases on in this um, debate that the federal government simply cannot is not efficient in this it cannot solve for this and um, if we don't then we're going to have the greatest impact of nuclear war in this round and it outweighs the dehumanization um, dehumanization impact so um, 
the magnitude, uh, the magnitude of this federal disadvantage is so great. It is nuclear war. It is among us. It will happen throughout the United States and the world if we do not get this to happen. Um, the time frame. It is going to happen now. If we, um, if we allow more power to the um, federal government, then it will, then it will further, uh, then nuclear war will happen a lot sooner. And so that is why you need to vote for the negative in this round, because I still have the counter plan still stands with 50 states can solve this a lot better, a lot quicker. And if you don't, then you're going to allow the federal government to do this, and it will lead to the greatest um, impact of the round, which is my federalism disadvantage. Thank you. Okay, so judges, I'm going to give you three reasons why you're going to prefer the affirmative plan in this round. First on impact analysis, magnitude, probability, and time frame. So she talks about how nuclear war is the biggest impact in this round. Okay, I solve for nuclear war because what's the root cause of nuclear war? What's the root cause of genocide and all of these impacts? Dehumanization. And since my plan solves for dehumanization, I solve for all of her impacts, all of her impact scenarios of nuclear war and whatnot, because I solve for dehumanization through the fostering of these critical thinking skills in uh, public education across America. Um, also, on a utilitarianism scale, I save the most lives because I'm solving for this dehumanization. She talks about how you're able to rehumanize people. Sure, that's great. But we still have dehumanization because we have this lack of critical thinking skills. I talked about how in the Holocaust, what was the root cause of, of that? Dehumanization. And I solve for that. So we're going to move away from these impact scenarios, like I said, of nuclear war and whatnot. Um, and uh, on a time frame scale, I talked about how I can do that now. Because I have the Department of Education uh, enforcing and giving money to all of the, the public schools across America, the $520 million from the discretionary budget, I can have that impact of dehumanization be taken care of now. And on a probability scale, I can do it because the Department of Education has this money. They have the $520 million and more, a part of their discretionary budget, to allocate this funding to all schools. So on a probability scale, uh, scale and a time frame scale, I can solve for this. Now onto a magnitude scale. I can do this now. I'm going to solve for, for more lives. I'm going to um, solve for more problems. So on, on those three scales, I solve and I have a bigger impact at the end of the day. Um, now onto the permutation. She talks, she keeps talking about how um, you can do a permutation because they're mutually exclusive. Do any of you guys know what mutually exclusive means? She has no explanation for that. She doesn't tell you why they're mutually exclusive. She has no explanation for that. So you can't vote for that because you don't even know what it is because she no offers no explanation for that. Whereas I tell you, you can perm both my counter, or both my plan and her counter plan because you can have the federal government and the 50 states working together to pass this uh, uh, reforming of education, of um, allowing more debate teams across America in all public high schools. So you can per both my plan and her, her counter plan. Um, and lastly, you're going to be voting for me because the federal government has the means to allocate this money to all schools in the United States without going bankrupt like the states. We have the $520 million from the DOE discretionary budget, so I can do this. And so I've given you three reasons, impact analysis, permutation, and how the federal government can do this without having an economic disadvantage in the status quo. So for all of those reasons and more, you will be voting for the affirmative side in this round. Thank you.